Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. We've been looking at the D76 type developers. We've covered D76 Original. We've covered the ADOX MQ Borax, which was a sharper developer with similar grain, um, but it had the same problems as the D76. And that is that as it aged, it changed in activity. Today, we're going to see what Ilford did to raise the bar. It's quite extraordinary when you look around you these days and see all the developers that we use, how much influence Ilford had on those developers. Let's check it out. So how did Ilford raise the bar? They discovered Thenidone's silver halide reducing ability. You see, Thenidone, which was a chemical that had been discovered earlier, was found by Ilford in the 40s to be a fantastic silver halide reducer. The problem was it was hard to make um, and it took them many years before they could make enough of it for it to become the ubiquitous developing agent that it did become. In fact, apart from pyro developers, phenidone is probably the most used developing agent now of all time. Every commercial developer uses phenidone. It's a marvellous developing agent. By itself, it's actually not very good. It's very quick at first, but never really reaches a good contrast. But super additive with another developing agent, such as hydroquinone or vitamin C, it becomes a remarkable developer. And this is how Ilford raised the bar. Now, when they first discovered phenidone's ability to reduce silver the way it did, they found that phenidone was 10 times more powerful. So they just started producing a, a D76 type developer by replacing the metal with one tenth of the amount of phenidone. And that was okay, but it wasn't anything special. And it took a few more years before Ilford perfected their developer, their D76 type developer with phenidone, and that they called ID68. So today we're looking at how to make ID68, which is a D76 type developer. You could also call it a microfen type developer because microfen, although probably not the same as ID68, is very similar and has the same properties. A great developer good for normal development and of course very good for pushing your films. If you want developing times for ID68, just use Microfen's development times. So let's get on with it. How do we make ID68, this exciting Ilford developer? Well, first of all, I need to fill up my developing jug. I'm gonna make 500 milliliters today. I'm going to fill up my jug with 350 milliliters of hot water around 45 degrees centigrade. And here it is. Okay, so now we don't have the metal to worry about and the oxidization problems of metal. So we don't have to add this pinch of sulfite and then the metal. Instead, we can just immediately add the sulfite. Now, you add 85 grams per liter. So in my case, making half a liter, I'm adding 42 and a half grams of sodium sulfite and hydrous. Let's stir that in and dissolve it. Now, ID68 is a phenidone hydroquinone developer. We call that a PQ developer. And when making PQ developers, you add the hydroquinone before you add the phenidone. So once this is dissolved in, we'll get this hydroquinone into solution. That's lovely. Yep, that's all dissolved. So normally five grams per liter I'm adding two and a half grams for my half liter of developer. Remember with these chemicals, you don't breathe them in, don't get them on your skin, don't get them in your eyes. Make sure you've got really good ventilation. I've got this door behind me wide open. Okay. 
and in goes the hydroquinone. Now, when Ilford made ID68, they had another trick up their sleeve. And they'd realized that with D76, and in fact with the MQ borax that we made uh, last week, that these developers increased inactivity over time. They became more alkaline, and this increased the contrast of the negatives. And the photographer didn't know how much that contrast was going to be increased. So what Ilford did here is they balanced or buffered the developer so it would stay the same alkalinity throughout its lifetime. So we're going to buffer this developer. Now they used seven grams per liter of borox. I'm going to put three and a half grams in my half liter and dissolve that in. Now to buffer borox they used boric acid. And what happens is these two chemicals maintain the same alkalinity in the developer for a long period of time and can, can sustain that alkalinity. So you know when you use this developer three months down the road, it's going to be the same activity as it was when you first made it. So that's the borox dissolved. Now we're going to add boric acid. Now, the developer is two grams per liter. I'm adding one gram for my half liter. And of course, we haven't added our phenidone yet. And it's now that we add the phenidone. Make sure that's completely dissolved. Yep. Happy with that. Now the phenidone is 0 0.13 grams per liter. Now that's a tiny amount of phenidone. And so I'm going to use my 1% solution of phenidone in glycol. And I, I showed making one of these in an earlier video on my channel. Now a 1% solution means that 10 mils of this glycol phenidone solution will impart 0 0.1 grams into my developer. Now I only need 0 0.13 grams in a litre, so 0 0.065 grams in my half litre. So I'm going to put six and a half mils into the developer. And there's my six and a half. Very accurate with the syringe and just put that straight in there. There, lovely. Put this top on before we have an accident. Nice. And stir that in. So that's my phenidone in. And finally, Ilford added potassium bromide which helps prevent fogging of the film and also, as we talked about last week, probably increases the sharpness of the negatives. And that's it. It's that simple to make ID68. Like I say, development times are the same as microfen. So now I'm going to top this up to 500 mils and I'm going to develop my film. And so here we have the negative on the right hand side of the ID68. This is a HP5 35 millimeter negative shot at 400 ISO and developed for six and a half minutes at 20 centigrade. And as you can see, it's similar to the D76 on the left. Let's zoom in and take a look, first of all, at the sharpness and the grain structure. So we can see the sharpness is about the same. I would think actually that the ID68 is slightly sharper than the D76, but it's also slightly more grainy. I can definitely see more grain on the right hand side. 
It's not objectional, but it's there. It's sharper grain. Um, and it's got 85 grams per liter of sulfite. So this is to be expected, just like the Adox MQ Borox. By reducing the sulfite levels to that magical 80 to 85 grams per liter, we've created a sharper developer. But of course, the grain is also slightly sharper because there's less silver replating going on that the higher levels of sulfite do with D76 stock solution. But the sharpness is very nice. It's not a lot more than D76, but it is there. There's more uh, contrast and um, sharpness and detail in the fly's wings on the right hand side. Of course, the downside of this sharpness is there's a slight reduction, I think, in the tonality. Uh, there just seems to be a bit more tonality in the D76. Let's just look around this negative so you can see what I mean about the grain. I hope you can see this on your screen. The sharper but defined grain in the right hand side. It's still there on the left. I mean, there's grain. It's HP5. It's a fast film, but it's it's less. It's a softer grain. The higher sulfite levels create that. Looking at the sharpness there, look at the leaf here. It's not bad in the D76 but it's quite a lot sharper on the right hand side. I think somebody said um, last week, they mentioned in a comment that it looks almost like a high pass filter has been applied to this, that sharpening has been applied. I do give a very slight sharpening um, to the scan, but they're equal. I always make sure it's equal um, on both sides. So I'm not applying any more to the right hand side than the left. Looking inside the flower, you can see there's more definition here on the ID68 negative. They both scan well. A little bit more contrast, isn't there, on the right hand side. It looks brighter, punchier. Again, to be expected, I think, with a a phenidone developer, a bit more punch. Phenidone developers, as good as they are, they do lose some of the highlight values, I think. So to be able to make a developer with phenidone to get a speed increase in the film, because this is a full full speed developer. So you can use HP5 at 400 ISO and you're getting 400 ISO with a phenidone developer. In fact, you could probably get maybe a third of a stop increase with ID68. But you do start to lose some of the tonality in the highlights. Not so much with the D76. As you can see, the highlight tonality is maintained but here we're beginning to lose it. Yes, I could reduce development slightly to bring it back down, but then I would start to get a muddiness in the shadows and the lower values. So let's print it and let's find out what it looks like on paper. And so here is the print. On the right hand side, the ID68, and on the left hand side, the D76. They're both beautiful prints. I like them both for different reasons. On the left, I think the D76 has slightly better tonality, especially in the highlights. I think the Phenidone developer has lost some of the detail in the highlights. And this is a problem with Phenidone. It can run away very easily with highlights. On the right, though, the ID68 is sharper. It's got similar grain. It's it's not objectional at this uh, viewing distance at all. And maybe it's because of the sharper grain that it creates the sharper image because these petals are three dimensional on this print. So there's advantages in D76 through tonality and there's advantages in ID68 with sharpness. But while Ilford were formulating and designing MicroFen and ID68. Somebody else 
was formulating a developer which took the best of D76 and the best of ID68 together to create a brand new developer that was going to beat them both at their own game. And that person was Jeffrey Crawley. Next week, I'm going to be formulating Jeffrey Crawley's D76 type developer and show you how it outcompetes both of these at their own game. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you then.